Blair of the Mounties. Present episode 29 in the dramatic series Blair of the Mountains. Following the tragic case of Virginia Stewart, in which Blair was instrumental in saving Clement Wilson, prominent London theatrical manager, from trial on a charge of murder, Blair's reputation increases rapidly. A year of hard work follows the Wilson case, a year of prosperity which brings Blair into touch with investigation work in the higher circles of society. To aid him in his work, Blair has secured the services of his old friend, Miss Guest, formerly of the Secret Service. As our scene opens, we find the two discussing a startling new development. I simply cannot understand it. It does seem rather strange. It's more than strange that the Earl of Waverton should not only wish to consult you, but that he should choose to make an appointment to see you here at the office. Miss Guest, you know everybody, uh, practically, in London society. What do you know about Lord Waverton? Well... He's Minister of the Air in the British Cabinet, formerly Chief Liberal Whip. Served with distinction in the war and... Oh, um... yes, yes, I know that part. I mean his private life. Oh, looking for family skeletons, eh? Possibly. There might be such a thing, of course. His wife was Peggy Delancey. She was married before. Ah, and her husband? I think he was killed in the war or disappeared or something. Hmm, Delancey. I seem to remember the name somewhere. And Lady Waverton, formerly Mrs. Delancey, eh? An actress, you say? Chorus girl type? Good gracious, no. She's the modern type, well-bred, highly educated and all that. She was born in Dublin, very good family, but poor, of course. She's very beautiful. Mm, sounds promising. Much different than their age. Quite a bit. The Countess of Waverton is about 35, I imagine. Her husband must be close mm. on 60. Mm. They have no children. Thanks, Miss Guest. That helps a lot. That must be his lordship now. Show him straight in. Yes, if you'll be so kind. This way, sir. The Earl of Waverton to see you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. you take this chair. Thank you. You've got the message from uh, Colonel Seaton? Yes, my lord. What can I do for you? That's what I came to discuss with you. I understand, Blair, that uh, you've had some experience in military intelligence work. During the war, yes, sir. Here in London and in France. Also considerable police experience. 24 years, Royal Northwest Mounted Police. Ah, yes. Uh, an enviable rep... Reputation. Useful combination. I need a man with just these qualifications. Seaton recommended you very highly. Very kind of him, I'm sure, sir. Mm. Tell me, Blair, could you devote practically all your time, say for a month or six weeks, to a special assignment? Is it uh, private or official? A combination of both. You will have no official standing. But the resources of my department will be at your disposal. And the nature of the task? That remains to be seen. But in a general way... You're aware, I am sure, that uh, the competition between the great powers, especially in aircraft, is becoming very severe. Yes, I understand so, sir. Yes, uh, in the case of England in particular, the details of our air defence plans are much sought after. And it is in this work you would like me to help? Frankly, I, I don't know. This may sound very mysterious. Perhaps I'd better tell you what's happened. Last night there was an attempted burglary at my home in Devonshire. In your absence? No, I was there. Two men got into the house. They were after the safe in my study. I heard them at work and managed to get down before they got the safe open. Were the men caught? No, they got away. It was moonlight. I fired at them several times. Apparently they were both wounded. Isn't that a matter for the police, Lord Waverton? Yes and uh, no. The county police are already busy, but I want something more, Blair. That safe contained official papers of tremendous importance. The results of a conference held at my house yesterday. A conference that I could have sworn was absolutely secret. I'll be glad to undertake the work if you'll tell me what is required, sir. Good. I want to find out what this thing is, who these men were, and who they are working for. In short, I want to set up a small, efficient intelligence unit, responsible only to me. You understand? I believe so, my lord. All right. Can you go down to Devonshire tonight? Yes, sir. Get what the county police have, which isn't very much, then go ahead. Question anyone you like in my household, with one exception. And that exception? Lady Waverton. I don't want her annoyed. If she talks to you, all right. But no questioning. Is that clear? Quite clear, sir. Now, one thing more. I brought a young American doctor up to town with me. Last night he was treating a man for a bullet wound under very, very strange circumstances. I'll send him along to you in a few moments. 
Get his story and see what you can do with it. Why, uh, uh, yeah, very well, sir. You may find me a little unusual to deal with, Blair. The whole thing is unusual. But I want this thing sifted thoroughly. We'll have a talk to Dr. Craig Holland, and then get ready to go to the country. Come and see me before you go. We'll go into the question of remuneration and so forth. Very well, sir. Is that all for the present? Yes, that's all. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lord Raven. Yes? Come in, Miss Guest. I know you're bursting with curiosity. Not at all. That's fine. Miss Guest, I'm going fishing. Leaving tonight for Coombe Seton in Devonshire. I thought it was something like that. Yes, I don't know how long I'll be away, but you can carry on, I suppose. I suppose so. There's a man to see you, Dr. Craig Holland. Oh, yes. I want to talk to him. You come in, Dr. Holland? Thanks. You are Inspector Blair? Yes, sit down, Doctor. Lord Waverton says you have something to tell me. Really, it's uh, so queer that I could almost believe it was a dream. Indeed. Are you visiting in England, uh, Doctor? Mm, not exactly. My home's in Boston, Massachusetts, but I have a cottage uh, near Combe Seton where I'm spending the summer. I write a good deal, and the ha- neighborhood suits me. I see. Now about this adventure of yours. Start at the beginning, and let's have all the details. Mm, all right. It was uh, last night about uh, 10 o'clock. Come in. Doc Holland? Yes, that's my name. It's like this, Doc. We got a patient for you. He's hurt pretty bad and... A patient? But, uh, see here, I have no... Watch his feet. That's got him. Pull that gag tighter. All right. Out into the car. Here you are, Joe. Drop him in that chair. Loosen that gag. Take the ropes off. There you are, Doc. No harm done. See here. What's, what's the meaning of this? Now, now, take it easy, Doc. If you think you can get away with this, why, you're absolutely crazy. Say, listen. You... We got a patient for you. He's hurt bad. If you fix him up, we'll take you back and no harm done. But if you don't want to do it, say so. Now, how about it, Doc? Well, if you have a man in need of attention, I'll do what I can. Now you're talking, Doc. Right this way. But understand, the moment I get away, I'm going to report this to the police. Oh, yeah? Okay, Doc. Right this way. He's in here. Good evening, Doctor. Who? Who are you? Let's not talk, Doctor. This man needs attention. I see. Uh, what's wrong? He has a bullet wound. Left thigh. Mm-hmm. Just missed the artery. It's not serious, but the bullet's still in there. Mm-hmm. What have you done? I gave him a hypodermic. Cleaned up the wound as well as I could and put on a compress. But this is ridiculous. I haven't a thing to work with. If those idiots who brought me here had only given me time to get my instruments... Well, that's all right. We have everything here. Anesthetic instruments. Everything you want. Mm, Pretty well prepared, I must say. Very well. Get me that uh, stethoscope. And get another pillow, please, will you? And some hot water, if you don't mind. And that, Inspector, is the whole story. Hmm, very queer business, Doctor. And you've no idea where this place was? Not the slightest. I was blindfolded, going and coming. It took about an hour both ways in the car. And they did a lot of turning. We went over one very rough road. But that might have been a blind. Yes, I see. How did Lord Waverton come to know of your experience? Through the county police. I reported to them, of course. Well, Doctor, I'm taking over this investigation. I leave for Coombe Seat in the night. Lord Waverton is lending me his car. Like to go along? Thanks. Uh, I have to get back, and frankly, I'm interested in this case. You know if the police are doing anything? Oh, yes, Superintendent McLean is down at uh, Combe Seton, but they're keeping this thing very quiet. No publicity by Lord Waverton's request. Uh, McLean's a good man. Yeah, you know him? Yes, met him years ago when he was a sergeant. All right, Doctor. Carly's here at five o'clock. See you later, eh? Yes. Goodbye for the present. Goodbye. <laughs> what is this uh, news, Brown, about a man found dead up on the moors? Oh, yes, it was a, it was a queer, you know. An unidentified man found dead near Chegford. Two bullets in him. Miles from any road and not a footprint or anything near him. Practically every bone in his body was broken. That's mm. funny. Yes, it is. I wonder uh, how he got there. <laughs> Couldn't have dropped from the sky. Well, that's just uh, precisely what happened. What? I, I see. You, you think he was dropped from a plane, eh? There's no doubt about Very it. Very interesting. Sir. 
What has that to do with this burglary at Lord Waverton? Well, the bullets was fired from Lord Waverton's revolver. It must have been one of the burglars. Jove, that's something. But it's the other man I'm interested in, the one Dr. Holland operated on. Well, it's a mighty odd case to handle, sir. But that aeroplane stunt gave me a idea. What's that? Well, it's, it's maybe a long shot, sir. But it set me looking for somebody that keeps a private airplane in this here district. That's not a bad idea. Do you get anything? Well, there's a very likely place not ten miles from here, sir. A landing field and everything. Christon Manor. You mean where Professor Schwartz lives? Yes, sir, that's it. You know him? Well, no, only by reputation. The place is the in the Tain Valley, a big property with enclosed grounds. The professor is a retired scientist. Keeps very much to himself. And he keeps uh, an airplane? Yes, he has two of them. Very wealthy, this I. Never goes outside the grounds except by plane. The Inspector McLean is going to look around that place this morning. You might like to go along with him, sir. Yes. You might find something. I'm afraid it'd be mighty odd, though, without a search warrant. I don't know. It's a long shot, as you say. Tell me, Doctor, this house you were taken to last the night before last. The room where you saw that wounded man. Think you could recognize it again if you saw it? I don't know about the room, but if this uh, Grayston Hall is the place, well, there, there is a way that I think I can prove it. I'd rather not say what it is, though. All right. Now as to this search of Grayston Hall. We can't get a warrant. If this professor is not mixed up in this business, he won't refuse to let us look. If he is involved, he'd hardly risk a refusal. Try him on the telephone, Brown, and uh, we'll get McLean and run down to the hall anyhow. All right, sir. You have heard the 29th episode in Blair of the Mounties. Tune in for the second part of this mystery, which is told in episode 30 of the series.